In this video, we're going to look at how the distributive law works for vectors. Specifically, we're going to use diagrams to show why a scalar m times a sum of vectors, a plus b, is equal to m times vector a plus m times vector b. And to do so, we'll consider three cases, the first of which is the case where m is a positive number. Now to help us show why the distributive law works with vectors in this case, we're going to use a diagram, and we're going to set up our diagram like this. So what's happening here? Well, based on the way we've constructed our diagram, we have two triangles, triangle OAB and OCD, and we've made them to be similar triangles, so they have the same angles. And their side lengths are in proportion. And we're setting it up such that triangle OCD has side lengths that are m times the side lengths of triangle OAB. Furthermore, let's define some vectors. We'll define vector OA as vector A and vector AB as vector B. Now the trick to showing why the distributive law works with vectors is to consider the vector OD. Let's talk about how we could express vector OD. Well, one way we could do that is to refer to vector OB. Notice that if I take vector OB and multiply it by the scalar m, I'd get vector OD. Why does that work? Well, they have the same direction, that is vector OB and vector OD, because of the way we set up our diagram. Furthermore, we know with our triangles that triangle OCD has side lengths that are m times that of triangle OAB. So if we multiply OB by our scalar m, we'll get vector OD. Let's write that down at the bottom of the screen. OD equals m times vector OB. Now let's take a closer look at vector OB. Notice that if I add vector A and vector B, which are tip to tail, so I can use the triangle law of vector addition, I get that A plus B gives me vector OB. So I could relabel that A plus B for vector OB. And looking down at the bottom of the screen again, I can rewrite M times vector OB as M times vector A plus vector B. Now let's look at expressing vector OD a different way. Notice I can express it in terms of vector OC and CD. Specifically, if I add vector OC to CD, I get a result in the vector OD. We do have a tip to tail configuration for vector OC and CD, so we can use the triangle law of vector addition. So let's write that down. Vector OD is vector OC plus CD. But think about vector OC for a minute. How could we express OC? Well, we could actually write it as m times vector a. Why can we do that? Well, it's in the same direction as vector a, based on the way we set up our diagram. And again, we know the side lengths of triangle OCD are m times the side lengths of triangle OAB. So if we take our vector a and multiply it by our scalar m, we'll end up with that vector OC. Similarly, we can express vector CD as m times vector b. Why? It's just based on the way we set up our diagram. We know that B and, and vector CD are in the same direction. They're parallel, and that's just based on the fact that we have similar triangles and all the angles are equal there. And furthermore, we know that if we take the side lengths of triangle OAB and multiply them by M, we get the side lengths of triangle OCD. So once again, vector CD could be expressed as M times vector B. So looking down at the bottom of the screen where I have vector OC plus vector CD, I can rewrite that as m times vector a plus m times vector b. Now notice what we have here. We have two ways of expressing vector OD. One way is to write it as m times vector a plus b, and the other way is to write it as m times vector a plus m times vector b. So since these are both ways of expressing vector OD, we can conclude that they are equal. That is, in other words, we have that m times vector a plus vector b is the same as m times vector a plus m times vector b, and that's the distributive law. Just a small note here. In this case, triangle OCD ended up being a larger triangle than OAB, which tells us that our scalar m was a number greater than one. If we had a positive number for m that was between zero and one, the only difference here would be that the smaller triangle would be OCD and the larger triangle would be OAB. The same arguments would follow though, and we'd end up with the same result. Now let's take a look at the case where m is a negative number. Luckily, we don't need to go through each step in detail like we did when m is a positive number because the argument is essentially the same. 
The only difference is we'd set up our diagram differently, and that diagram would look like this. Notice we've still set up two similar triangles, OAB and OCD, but the orientation is different. This will allow us to deal with the negative scalar m and to work with vectors in opposite directions. We're still calling vector OA vector A, and we're still calling vector AB vector B. And everything from our case when m is positive still follows. And we still get that m times a plus b is m times a plus m times b. Note that in this case, I've chosen a value for m that is between 0 and negative 1. And you can see this because triangle OCD is smaller than triangle OAB. If you chose an m value that was lower than negative 1, perhaps negative 2 or negative 3, triangle OCD would end up being a larger triangle than OAB. Finally, let's look at the case where m equals 0. We don't need a diagram to deal with this case. We can simply use the equation at the top right of the screen and show that the left and right sides work out to the same value. Let's start with the left side. m times vector a plus vector b. Well, if m is 0, that would be 0 times vector a plus vector b. And we know that vector a plus vector b would give us a vector. And whenever we multiply a vector by 0, we get the 0 vector. Now looking at the right side of that equation, m times vector a plus m times vector b. Well, if m is 0, that would equal 0 times vector a plus 0 times vector b. And as we just mentioned, 0 times a vector gives us the 0 vector. So we'd have the 0 vector plus the 0 vector, which works out to the 0 vector. Therefore, m times vector a plus vector b is the same as m times vector a plus m times vector b, since they both work out to the 0 vector.